all right y'all I'm gonna be doing this in parts I have to do it in at least a two part and the reason why is because what y'all getting here I don't want it to be overshadowed by the other stuff because the other stuff is going to come from a, of a personal perspective with a little bit of biblical a little bit of spirituality and this one is strictly on on more of a spirituality type of deal all right let's get in then you as you know this is about um cat williams on club <coughs> shay shay and i and i wrote myself down so i can stay on point because it's, it just it was so much um revelation and so much that came so again i'm doing the first part of this and then the other breakdown of the other part of the revelations or the other part so nonetheless nonetheless okay <laughs> now this is the first thing that got me I noticed that a lot of people were saying how it was so funny. They was laughing through the whole thing. And I believe I have a sense of humor, but I didn't find any of it funny. When I watched it, it was strictly like I was just tuned in. And I found myself kept stopping at so many points because either it was a revelation that came like, I knew it. I knew that. And or the Holy Spirit gave me other revelations dealing with scriptures like this is what that is and i'm like wow so i had to keep stopping stopping through it and i was so um in tune to it like i said i didn't find it funny um about the third time that i watched i watched some other people um reviewing certain parts and these are certain people that i know um have a different kind of platform so i wanted to kind of see where their take was and see if anybody was going to say anything that I said so that way I don't have to repeat it I can just guide you to what they said and then do the rest of mine but I didn't see any of it so this is where this is going um so the next part is um when I first um thought about this I'm like well when were the interviews um with Steve Harvey Ricky Smiley and I'm such an entertainer and I found out because I did. I remember seeing Cedric Entertainers, but I couldn't remember how long it's been. Now Cedric Entertainers, um, I mean, I'm looking at Ricky Smiley's interview was ten months ago. Um, Cedric Ent no no excuse me Cedric Entertainers was twelve months ago. Ricky Smiley's was ten months ago, and um, um, Steve Harvey's was eight months ago. And I thought it was interesting that they all was two two. Um, months apart from each other and it kind of made me go into thinking about what Cat Wynn would say their partnership they always roll together so it seemed like that could have been a situation where they had all said okay let's let's do this or it could have been where um Shannon Sharp the host of um excuse me Club Shay Shay said well I know these all boys so let me get them in one by one but I thought it was interesting of how they came in and that Steve Harvey was the last you know, because it reminds me of when um, Cat Williams was talking about how the Kings of Comedy wasn't actually Kings of Comedy. It was Steve Harvey's tour and they was opening for him, but they called it that. So it kind of seems interesting that he followed them. But also I thought it found interesting that it's a number two. And when you look at the number two, the number two is dealing with like partnerships, friendships, family, teamwork. Um, um, cooperation and different things like that. So everything that it appears Steve, it appears Cedric, and appears Ricky Smiley is about within their own circle um, is connected to how they came on to do this interview, whether they was aware of it or not. Not saying there's anything wrong with their partnership, teamship, if it's done with morality and decency and order, um, but just wanted to kind of give that note because um, that number definitely um, stood out to me. Another thing that also stood out to me is that, okay, here we are like eight months later, and you're doing yours in 2024. And I remember um, Shannon Sharp saying in, in an interview um, with this other guy, and I'm going to have to put the picture up here because I can't remember the name. And um, he was saying how... Um, he was saying how he was trying to get cat since I think 2022, um, but their schedules would never match. Um, and then um, they was trying to reach out again. People got back and said, okay, he can do this. And they kind of left some time space open and mapped it out. And here it is. But I thought it was interesting that he did it in 2024, which two plus two plus four is an eight. 
eight spiritually means new beginnings. So I thought that was kind of interesting that his fell on that. And I also thought it was interesting that he was 102, um, the 102 um, interview with um, um, Shannon Sharp on his Club Shay Shay um, podcast or um, yeah, his thing because one plus two is three and three means completion. So I thought that was interesting. And not only that, three is about the Trinity. Now I'm not calling Cat Williams or Lord or God, not doing that, so don't get that wrong. But I just thought that that number three is a key number as well as the eight number. So you have um, completion and then you have new beginnings. So that seemed like that's what's going on with him. So I thought that was kind of interesting with the numbers. I don't know if anybody, anybody caught that. I haven't heard anybody talk about that. And the numbers are very significant. So um, I'm going to go like I'm going at my notes because I want to make sure um, that I um, stay on track. Um, the other part I thought was interesting um, is that um, before, like, let me let me go. Let me do this before I go any further. Um, I do want to say that I did have a couple of complaints um, or dissatisfactions, I should say, more dissatisfaction with the interview. So I want to get that out the way before I go finish up. Now, on Shannon Sharp's side of it, um, dealing with the Cetra Entertainer, the Ricky Smiley, and the um, Steve Harvey interviews, I know there were some things that was offered to him, but I also know there were certain things asked. Like, for instance, he had asked Cedric about, did he steal Cat Williams' joke? Excuse me. This was back in 1999-2000. And I'm like, why would he even bring that up? Because to me, that's stirring the pot. And to me, that's messy. To me, um, Cedric Entertainment Entertainer excuse me, has done so much, so much through that time that I didn't understand why that in particular would even be a topic. So I think that was a little bit messy and that could have saved that particular thing from not even happening. Also, um, with Cat Williams, um, I was disappointed in two segments. One um, of like dealing with like... Um, certain name calling um, and or more so and also um, 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 joking on the physical description of people to me that kind of pulled and kind of made it made some stuff he said at that time seem more um, personal and petty and not that um, he wasn't really sticking with what he was there for to me um, understand, you know, people say, oh, he was a comedian. He just added his little take in. But I just feel like when you're doing truth, as he said, um, truth don't need to be encouraged by anything. It just adds what it is. So I wasn't that thrilled with those things. So anyway, let's get back. So <clears throat> with those things said, um, um, one of the things I also noticed that, um, and I don't know if anybody noticed this, when they were taught, when, um, Shannon Sharp was taught when um, he was allowing um, Cat Williams to talk. Cat Williams had a lot of energy. He had a lot of focus. He was eye to eye. Um, <clears throat> a lot of body movement. But anybody notice that when the conversation switched to his childhood and he started talking about his childhood, how all of a sudden his demeanor went down. Um, he wasn't as bold. His eye contact wasn't as, as, wasn't as sharp. Um, and I noticed that um, as he talked about his family, his mother and father, main, more so his father, which you can clearly tell they had a strained relationship, which caused him to leave with his puppy and twenty five hundred dollars just to leave the house and just go to a, just to go to a truck stop and get a ride and just keep him pushing to Miami and, and other places that he went. Um, you can tell that even though there was a some disdain. Um, you know, or and some strain going on from his for his father that he was still defending his father. He was still protecting his father um, from seeing any, anything other than his dad. You know, and I thought that was very interesting because um, he he didn't tap on that any further than that. So no one actually knows if they ever reconciled or anything like that. And whether they have or not, it's clear that that whole experience is still heavy on his heart and heavy on his soul. Um, so um, I'm not sure how much of that when it comes to someone older than him um, and could be seen as a father figure, um, seeming like they're not being honest or truthful, that it just may be sparking something or whatever it was but i just thought that was interesting that of that dynamic 
um, how he, um, his whole, like I said, again, his whole dynamics changed in that. And um, I also noticed um, um, that when, he, when Shannon Sharp was on that other show, and I thought this was a good point that he made, is that a lot of people came at him because they're saying how, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, how um, that he didn't ask follow-up questions and he was explaining, I'm not a journalist, I'm just a conversationalist. And, but he said how this is 102, this 102, this 102nd um, interview that I've had and nobody ever said that to me before. Out of the oh, first 101, nobody said you should have asked more questions, you should have did this and that, only with Cat Williams. And it's like, why is the target now only on Cat far as that and never with anybody else? So I thought that was a good point he made because it's now it's like, okay, why, you know, you still have people even in the public sector, our sector out here that still um, have an issue with the truth. And, and, and my take on that clearly was anybody that was ruffled about the truth being spoken, excuse me, probably was ruffled because the truth was probably spoken about them and or they never had a chance to speak their truth and and it's weird because sometimes when people haven't had a chance to speak their own truth seeing somebody else do it they will be rally informed and or get motivated to speak their own but there was a lot of people that seemed like they had a little bit of an issue with that this like i said this interview definitely validated um many things that I already knew. Definitely a lot of things that I already knew. But the Holy Spirit definitely brought some things to my attention. And like I said, I don't want to make this one long because the other one is going into something different. So, um, but I also wanted to say, but this video definitely, this interview definitely showed us things that we need to be mindful of, things that we need to be aware of. I'm also telling us things we need to be praying for, things that we need to be praying about, and not only that, things that we might need to be warfaring against. And it shows how um, the enemy can be moving in certain areas and what happens, um, you know, when things keep coming, coming at us and we're, and we're holding, we're holding. And probably most of the time it's forgiving. I'm holding because I already forgave it. I'm not trying to go there with it. But I noticed that Ricky Smiley, Sergio Entertainer, Ludacris, Kevin Hart, and Tiffany Haddish thus far have responded. Out of all of those responses, I only can say that I was very interested in the Ricky Smiley's response. And I'm going to get into the other response on the other video. But Ricky Smiley's response was very interesting <laughs> because I could tell he was being very careful. Very careful. But he also had a friend of his who was there. <laughs> um, excuse me doing the early Friday um time when they was building up to do the first do the Friday the first um do the Friday that he was on. And the thing that got me with that was um his friend is saying how he did have the part so um and that but they end up switching him out to Kevin Hart and how Kevin Hart, you know, just crushed the part. Ricky Smiley agreed he did crush that part. I couldn't have done it like that. You know, it was changed up. He had the pimp element in and different things like that. So it seemed like what may have happened is that Ice Cube might have ran into Ricky Smiley. Like he said, he ran into me. He was like, I'm going to do this movie. I'm going to give you a role in this. Say this is the part I wanted you to play. This money Mike God, God wanted you, I want you to play. Um, and then after they started doing casting, because Kevin Hart said that I was um, 210, no, 201 or 210, um, um, the person to, um, comedian to try to get that role. And so I think what happened is um, Kevin Hart might not have been aware that Ice Cube had first offered him that part. And then as they got into casting, um, he, of course, he's not aware of this. And he figured, okay, if all of us in here, nobody can possibly already have it. And so, and at that time, that's probably what Ice Cube had switched and said, you know, I think I might, I'm, I'm going to go another way with this and give him the Santa Claus, let Ricky Smiley do the Santa Claus and get somebody else to do this. Or because he saw the different ones or saw Cat saying, okay, this is it. But I think that the way Cat Williams described Ricky Smiley's behavior about, I suppose, um, be that this will be my part. This will be my part. Um, that part, and then also complaining about um, allegedly complaining about. Um, I don't want to be the Santa Claus to wear this um, this um, bandana over my face. Nobody gonna see me. Nobody gonna know who I am and stuff like that. So with those kind of behaviors, will make him believe that there's no way that you could have possibly been off of this part. Cause why are you out here tripping? We all in the movie. We all getting a little something. You know, so that could have been. So I think that was just an understanding on uh, misunderstanding on 
those little elements because some things happened probably before Cat even came on. So I think that's what happened. So, um, and then Cat Williams, one thing he said was I thought was interesting. He said, um, Satan cannot create anything, which we know he can't because he mimics, all he do is mimic stuff. Um, and it says that he not even blessings for his people. And I want people to understand something. Um, when he's talking about shortcuts and people doing stuff to get ahead and get above people and take stuff from people and lie on people, cheat, steal, all of these different things that they do, they got to realize something. Satan don't love anybody, anything that God created. So unless you are of that strict bloodline of the enemy and the Nephilim, if you're not of that straight bloodline or any part of that bloodline, then he don't like you. And even if you are, if you got anything mixture with anything God created, he don't like anything God creates. And that includes you. So just know why, you know, you, you try to get ahead and you're trying to do your stuff. Don't go that route. Don't go that route. Because what happens is most people who um, so-called, when they say so their soul, what they don't realize is that um, the enemy didn't give you any gift. He didn't give you any gift, not a gift at all. What happened is this gift that's already embedded in you, which he knows about. So he makes you believe that he's giving you this gift and giving you this talent and you're running with it. The only difference between him trying to lead you and have his people open up doors to make it look like he's blessing you is the fact that you're going through all of these doors without no protection. Everything you're doing has absolutely no protection. However, because you're using God's gifting, and even anointing, if you have anointing on that gift, in a way that it wasn't intended. So there's no protection for you while you're using that gift in that manner. However, when you're using the gift in a manner that God has purposed it for, you have all the protection in the world by it. So I just want to put that little tidbit out. And also, the last thing that I want to say, and I'm going to read it because I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly because it's how it came to my spirit, is that um, a lot of times the lesson, the one of the biggest lessons here is this. Do not poke a bear when he's still or sleeping. And don't think that a for, the forgiveness, don't think that forgiveness removes the memory from an elephant. And it goes to say God's people um, that's in service and purpose may appear to be silent, quiet, meek, and forgiving. But it in no way makes them vulnerable, weak, or fearful because they are fearless. Nonetheless, I just wanted to put that out there and um, hopefully, you know, just to do what it needs to do. All right.